Peggy 18. This is very personal for me. What's fun about it is, is knowing this game is made by hundreds of people who deeply, deeply care about each other and care about the, the property uh, growing and becoming the next Star Wars or the next Middle Earth. Whether you're writing a book or making a video game or making a movie, your first job is to get your reader, your player, your viewer to suspend disbelief. There's no point starting unless you have a fresh, exciting idea. We, at the very beginning, said we have to have at least 10 world moments. And those are the moments that you just sort of assume you know what's going to happen because you've played so many games, and you surprise the audience. The challenge is to get people interested in it. If you create a story that is interesting, people will want to play it. Why do we fight? Because there is hope. Because only through battle can we break the chains that fate has forged. Let's just make a hell of a game. And if you're going to do a hell of a game and it's fantasy oriented, you have to bring in your adventures and you have to have your elves and your magic and your mages and your monsters and your trolls and your curses and your cyclopses and all the, all the stuff that you would just close your eyes and go, yeah, of course it has to be there. We spent six months just building the world. The scenery, the landscapes, the, the characters, the monsters, they're, they're beautiful or they're horrid. But there's a vividness about the image. It has meaning and resonance. It's coherence. The main character in Reckoning starts the game waking up on a pile of corpses. Well, you're dead see but you wake from the dead you're the first person in history that did that but once you come out of it you're you're sort of you're sort of an empty husk if you will and now you as the gamer depending on what class you chose to sort of play your game will depend on how your adventure actually goes you're the one without fate you're the unfated little people might see you as the beacon of hope and the big people might see you as the threat to their power you are unique, you are different, and potentially you are a world-changing person. And at the time this happens is a time of very, very high magic. You, as the player, get to sort of write the history of your character. You can constantly be rearranging your fate. Are you a guy that stands back and casts spells? Are you a guy that sneaks up from behind and sticks him in the back? A wizard that likes to have a big golf bag of things and blow the meat off things with a lot of different tools. You can be all of those, and you can keep changing those. You get the reader on the edge of the seat. Well, in this game, we're going to get the player on the edge of the seat. I want you to be able to see things and say, Oh God, am I that badass that suddenly did that? If you love combat, if you're a Mortal Kombat, God of War type of gamer, then there's hundreds of hours of deep immersive combat and gameplay here. I want the player to feel like he moves the way he wants to move. The only words that are good to describe our combat is If you're a hardcore RPG questing oblivion kind of gamer, there's hundreds of hours of gameplay in this game as well. Every time you play the game, it's almost going to sort of feel fresh and new, because once you get through your 200 plus hours of gameplay, and you go, I want to do it all over again, even if you pick the same guy, try to do the same path, you can't get there. That draws people in. And other than that, it's just a blast to play.